Thank you. Sorry. Hello, everybody. I'm really happy to be here. I'm part of the organization committee, so this is really nice to 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 be here as a presenter. Thanks, Ken, for being session leaders and all to be here. Igno, um, Andre, Andrea, and Jan. And I'm happy to be in this session together with them because I, I'm here to tell a little bit about a project. I, I, I had the opportunity to be part of. Uh, it was a, a data journalism project and I've been using FOS4G uh, tools to deal with the, the, the objectives of this project. And it's interesting in, to be in this session because we're gonna have a little bit of different points of views. We saw from uh, Thorsten and Ian and Andren, Andrea, uh, the point of view of the develop, developer. Uh, with Igno, we saw the point of view, the importance of building a community to get more people uh, interacting and using uh, free and open source software for GIS. And now I will show uh, a user case about um, co uh, pandemic situation and COVID-19 as well, uh, but more in this, um, in this project. Just, so before I start, just a little bit about me. I'm Felipe, Felipe Sodré ba Barros. Um, I am a Brazilian geographer. Nowadays, I live in, in, in Argentina. And I've been working with GIS and a lot of uh, spatial analysis, which nowadays um, are calling as a spatial data sciences or geographical data science. And I'm here to present about this project um, that um, we use it free and open source software to face negationism and to face this pandemic situation of uh, COVID-19. I'm pretty sure that you know this map already, right? This is the uh, Jon Snow uh, cholera map uh, related to the cholera outbreak on Soho neighborhood in, in London. And this is like a, a mandatory map or a presentation to be done in any um, GIS introduction course. But uh, most of them, I'm afraid to say, at least in Brazil, they stay only on this map showing that uh, Jon Snow uh, could relate the case of um, um, cholera death with the spatial distribution with the, the water plum and then to, to help to overcome this situation. But the fact is, uh, it's much more beyond that, uh, in that situation, that case, in that specifically part of the history, the, um, there was a, a paradigm called the miasma paradigm, which is the, the belief that all the, the, the disease uh, was spread through the air, and this is really related to the, the historical situation, the, the um, uh, historical, the, the, the time they was living, the tools they had, the, the industrial development. And Jon Snow not only built this map, but together with other collaborators, he's still uh, working on it to um, organize the argument to show to politicians or, or to managers to say that this is not a disease spread through the air. This is a new case. This is something new that there is a disease that can be spread to, through through the water. So it's it's much more bigger than just the map itself. I usually uh, suggest reading this this book. 
it's the same book, but in Spanish, in Portuguese, and in English. And um, it, it, in my opinion, is a good plot of the situation and how, uh, and the real importance of uh, Jon Snow. And by this time, you must be wondering, you no, know, um, what, what, uh, which negationism? What are you talking about? And it's a um, shame from myself to say that uh, in 2018, if I'm not wrong, Brazilian uh, majority population decide to have as a president Jair Bolsonaro. And I bring here to show that uh, according to the news, different kind of news, um, there is a, a there is a situation caused by the lack of activity of jo Jair Bolsonaro, or worse, the way he is acting to with this COVID nineteen situation is worsening that is getting worse the situation and then this also uh, it's been seen as a um, attack to human rights because he is um, negating that there is a real this he's still negating that there is a real problem he went to U, uh, un forum a few weeks ago he's not um, he didn't use the vaccine and this is a really dangerous situation but this is not only a, a human health uh, situation or a public health situation but this is an environmental problem as well because they are using the fact that everybody are concerned with COVID-19 situation to flexibilize the, the, the environmental laws and to, uh, to, I have no word to say, but it's like they, they are taking advantage of this calamity to flexibilize um, environmental law. And not only in the, the environmental uh, um, subject, but also in the news, he's still um, posing a, a threat to press of freedom in, in, in also um, in the democracy. Uh, I've read this book, How Democracy Dies. Uh, it's an interesting book um, that uh, try to relate the, the Trump elections with and, and the way he, he managed the, the political situation with this, uh, the, 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 um, how important it is in democracy to have um, subjects like the freedom of press not being attacked. So in other words, free of, free of press is something really, really important. It's a key thing on a democracy beyond a lot of other um, subjects. So, um, I was invited in the beginning of this year to work together with Info Amazonia. It is a small and independent press uh, who works basically with Amazon uh, subjects, environmental, social, indigenous, uh, indigenous uh, problems. And um, they, they came up with this, um, this question like, um, uh, let's start with our work, with a project, uh, trying to relate the, the situation, the COVID-19 situation with the forest fires we have in Amazon. I will talk better about the project, but the, the name of the project is Inhaling Smoke Beyond the Climate Change. Um, it is supported, it was supported by John Knight and big local news from Standard University, which made possible to, um, to develop this, this uh, data journalism project. So about the objectives, uh, we had to identify the best data sets 
uh, about uh, particulate matter smaller than 2.5 uh, micrometers. If in case you don't, you are not used with uh, the um, combustion smoke usually has um, this particulate matter uh, smaller than 2.5. Also, the the particulate particulate matter smaller than 10 uh, micrometer. And this is uh, this one uh, specifically is a, a really dangerous situation because it attacks the um, the respiratory systems without covid-19 situation it is already a, 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 a really well known particulate that attacks the, the the respiratory system and so the the idea was to identify the best that set that we could identify the, the concentration um, especially and validate this uh, data set with the temporal and spatial uh, values with air pollution sensors, then thanks to uh, researchers from Acre University. They, uh, they are using, they are already working with these, those kind of analysis. They have installed air pollution sensors in ground so we had like we 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 used those uh, pollution sensor as truth ground truth to validate with the other data set we had um, we could use then validate and estimate or, or model the the correlation uh, not only the correlation but of the um, particulate matter with forest fire occurrence and to identify, and then this is the, the core object of this um, work, to identify if there is a relation between the exposure to high PM uh, particulate matter values with hospital admission and length of stay by respiratory syndromes caused by COVID-19. So just a small disclaimer, we are not uh, relating the uh, particulate matter with the, the spread of the COVID-19. No, we are relating to um, if, if there is any um, increase on the, uh, on the hospital admission related to um, the exp exposure with the, for on, on the particulate matter. So a little bit about the particulate matter I'm saying. Uh, this is um, a hair. And so you can have a, a dimension of the size. This is a, a, a fine bit sand. And we have particulate matter of smaller than 10 microns in diameter. And we have the um, particulate matter smaller than 2.5 microns in diameter. And this one is the one we was working because it's the well known as a, a problem for respiratory system. So about the spatial data sets, we came up with the Copernicus Art Atmosphere uh, Monitoring Service. They has a, a data set specifically um, forecasting the, the, um, the particulate matter. And uh, this forecast is a huge model with a lot of inputs from meteorological um, stations. And uh, we came up with this one as the best one for, for us because of the special resolution and the, the, time, the time resolution as well. And this data set, um, they run daily models for every three hours, predicting uh, until five days ahead. But we decided to be, uh, to be used for 2012. Sorry, I forgot to say that this analysis was run for only the year 2012. And we got the, the models run in the day for the day, for the um, every three hours for the same day to get the, the most 
restrict uh, forecast. In total, we, we could access to 1,920 images, which I pro processed then using R and slash Python. Actually, the most process were done in, in R using the STARS package, an amazing package that allows me to process everything really, really fast. And the public health about the, the, the hospital admission, we use the data source, which is the, um, the public health system in Brazil. Although all problems we had on the president trying to hide those information we could use, or in the case we needed, we accessed the, the state level data on healthy information, health information. So about the validation, uh, we are here seeing here the, the, um, the uh, values from CAMS in red and yellow, the sensors from the Acre uh, University. They has uh, not a lot of sensors, but the ones they, 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 they has, we use it to validate and we could see that during the fires uh, season in Amazon is a well-known season. It was a kind of natural fire season, but nowadays it's been like a, a long time. It's not natural. It is also a human uh, activity and not any kind of human. There are people, the, those fires are associated with deforestation, with mining and um, other activities. So just to, to show you that we could realize that temporal and spatially, we could realize that the trend on sensors on the group, uh, um, ground truth are really uh, sh uh, shown in the, the predicted, uh, on the model we are using, uh, the data set we are using. And then we are uh, showing here, we have like several uh, municipalities, the line is in white, and then we have uh, a uh, suggest or a limit from World Health um, World Health Association. World Health. Well, I don't remember the name exactly, but the World Health um, Organization. They suggest that the, the daily concentration of exposure shouldn't be higher than twenty five. Uh, grams per uh, meters cubic. Okay, so this is the line here, the line here showing the, the limit, and then, uh, of course, few uh, municipality be before the uh, burn the, the fire season, they already was um, presenting uh, daily exposure higher than the suggested by the um, global health organization. And then during the, the, the fire season, every, every, not all, all municipality, but a lot of those got really worse situation. So uh, attention to, I'm saying to daily exposure, daily exposure. So all they expose it to a value higher than 25 uh, grams per um, grams per uh, meters cubic. So the key finds we, we could uh, uh, achieve that for each day of expo exposure bigger than two point uh, bigger than the suggested from the uh, World Health Organization increase in 2% the um, probability of a person being hospitalized. So it's like a, a, to developing a worse scenarios of COVID, of actually of a, pro health, a respiratory problem. The, the person supposing that a person 
uh, already with COVID, they will probably de develop a, a problem on the respiratory system. Then being exposed for each day, exposed on this uh, high level, we will increase in 2% the probability of this person to be hospitalized on a worst case of a respiratory uh, situation. Also that the, the um, smoke fires was related to an increase of 18% in severe case, cases of COVID and 24% in admission for respiratory syndromes. I mean, uh, we could split the persons with COVID-19 and then people that had problem, respiratory problem that wasn't diagnosticated with COVID-19. So it's like a, a, a quarter of 24% uh, in, in admission for five states in Amazon. And here I'm showing, I won't uh, tell about this uh, infographic, but the, the states are Mato Grosso, Rond Rondonia, which was the worst one, the worst place to be, and Acre, Amazonas, and Pará. Those five uh, states that we could associate to an increase of 18% of severe case, uh, cases of COVID and 19% of case of um, uh, respiratory syndromes. Yeah, but uh, this is true, uh, talking to a, um, in a large case, but if we go to uh, municipality cases, we can see like, for in instance, Pawini in Amazon state had all the 30 uh, days of August with higher values than the two, uh, than 20, 25 uh, grams per meter cubic, all the days with higher level, higher level. And this is, um, this uh, represented as a, um, uh, on, um, El, uh, uh, increasing on the 18% of the in, in hospital admissions for COVID and 115 for uh, respiratory sy syndrome. Uh, others as well had uh, the same, pretty much the same situation. And then I came up with the, the, the part of the reports. We are, uh, this is a work of a data journalists. So it's not only get on this um, model uh, case or scientific case, but also to understand what's going on to the people. So I bring here the case of uh, Tanya Silva. She is on, on the report we, we, we have published. She was pregnant, she got COVID in the far season, she got really bad, she was pregnant and had to have her, her baby before, so both could be alive. She's quite fine nowadays, she's still uh, living with the sequels of of the case he, she had, and perhaps you are not, you are now asking, okay, Felipe, but why are you talking about Tanya and not not about other person? A lot of people, includes, um, died about. It. Yeah, this is the point. The point is here to use all this uh, scientific approach to understand the worst place, uh, the mo the place that was most affected, to go there to talk to people and to understand the, the situation of these people that um, on, on most exposed because of different situation. Pretty much what Jon Snow did on the cholera outbreak. Tanya uh, lives on a quilombo. Um, I should uh, mention here that in Spanish, quilombo is used to a messy situation. In Portuguese, it's like a, it's a way to name a community 
of original people from or related with the slavery process we had in Brazil. Okay, so she is uh, living in a small community far from the hospital and then the idea is really to show that there are people suffering a lot being a part of the, the health system that then uh, should be the case. Also, Raimundo is a, a extractivist. He, he lives, works uh, with, with the forest, all the, 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 proje all, all the things he, he gets, he extracts from the forest. He fought together with Chico Mendes, which is a, a, a person, um, a known person in Brazil that uh, fought the, the, the deforestation process, showing people that they can live with the forest getting uh, their, their incomes from the forest. He fought and now he is uh, in this situation. He got contracted um, COVID, got really bad situations. He's alive, but he lives in a extractivism community which is the one identified as the most attacked by the deforestation and the people that are trying to put another use, uh, use the land on other, others' way. Also, the last one, uh, Beb Tok Kirin, I don't know how to say, he's a, a, a leader, an indigenous leader, uh, we say a cacique in Portuguese, he passed away, unfortunately, and he is in a uh, indigenous land, which is unfortunately the, the 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 land most attacked for people trying to mine in their land and to using fire to the defor for deforestation, and so it's not good news I'm bringing here, but it's like trying to. Uh, show people how is what is the idea on the data journalism this is the the team i worked with juliana mori is the the leader of the project she works for um, info amazonia worked together with uh, on this scientific part and then all the reporters reporters and I'm, we will leave a few related links i will share um, or you can uh, reach me on Venulis. I can share my presentation. The idea is you have every um, every report I showed here. You can read and also the the reports we have done. So pretty much um, is that is that. I'm glad to. I think I'm on time. And just to say that uh, thanks. Special thank to all developers to all the people, uh, organizing community. Um, we are using, we are trying our best to use the software you are developing to get a better lives, not only for ourselves, but to, to the others, and then to face the, this situation of negationism and uh, this bad situation of pandemic thanks and i'm available for any question um thank you thank you felipe uh, we are just uh, at the end of the session but since there's a break afterwards we can stay a couple of minutes for having the questions um i'm going to read through the questions if you if, if, if you if you like right now Okay, so what action did this work call for and any positive responses from the responsible organizations so far? So far, uh, unfortunately, and we wasn't uh, expecting any, any activity from the government because they are negating, they are, um, they are uh, going against the situation. So the, the idea is like share those histories to show that a lot of people suffering. Um, I'm not in the Info Amazonia, but I'm sure we, we associated with others, um, big press to 
spread this uh, situation. So I'm not sure about how, how is um, the activity, if there is something changing, but um, in Brazil, I don't think so, but the idea is to uh, articulate and I know that uh, there, is, there are a lot of uh, investigations going on uh, internationally includes includes to 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 see this situation we are facing. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, next question is from the audience. Based on the results of this work, um, what do you expect in a future scenario of intensifying the effects of climate change? So, what are you expecting in the future? Hmm. Tough question. I. I... <laughs> Unfortunately, with all the results we got, I, I, I'm not able to expect something better than we are facing. Uh, we run this analysis. I, as you can see, I, I didn't put much um, effort on showing here about the model we, we use it, but it would be interesting to um, go further on trying to understand how could be the, how would be the situation on, on, on climate change, but I, I don't think we will be better than we are seeing nowadays. Um, okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there are no questions, but uh, lots of uh, comments that are congratulating and thanking you for, uh, the, for your grand, great presentation now. Uh, so I'm going to thank you as well for this uh, great presentation on this topic and also thank you for your efforts uh, within the organizing committee. So um, we are hoping that we will have a great event throughout the week. Yes, thank you everybody. I'm available to, to talk about and have a good conference. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, um, we are going to have a break at the conference uh, right now. So I think it is in one hour or two hours. Just let me check the schedule. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, the, the, the sessions will continue in, in, in one hour. Uh, there will be a talk and then the sessions will continue. Uh, thanks a lot and uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for watching this session. Um, hope to meet you, have to talk with you as well during the 